Hello everyone. Welcome to another edition of Tech Talks with Nascom Insights. This is the third roundtable discussion that we are having on the recently report, recently launched Nascom Strategic Review Report FY 2022. In this session, we will be discussing how the last year was a remarkable year for tech startups with the news of tech startup unicorns spreading like white fire. Joining me today are three of my fellow colleagues from Nascom Insights team. Nirmala Balakrishnan, Research Practice Lead, IT, BPM and Industry Trends. Ashish Gupta, Senior Analyst, Product and Startups. Diksha Nerurkar, Research Practice Lead, Cloud and Edge. Welcome to the three of you. Thank you, Naman. Thank you, Naman. So let's begin our, our conversation today with, the, with our first question to Ashish. Ashish, if you can decipher for us this curious case of Indian tech unicorns and what are the factors contributing to this exponential growth? First of all, thanks, Saman, for giving us, the, giving us the opportunity to be part of this panel. So that's rightly said, 2021 has been a remarkable year and has shattered all records. Uh, the major thing I think we can highlight here is that uh, 2021 has shelved all the effects of the pandemic and the Indian startup ecosystem stood firmly and saw a revival of the funding after a significant drop in 2020. But 2021 was a complete U-turn. Right from the investments to the unicorns, startups led the race across all grounds. And not only a strong funding environment and increasing ticket sizes, but what I've seen a different this year is the adoption of products and solutions offered by startups have also seen a rise. So people have accepted that the Indian uh, People have accepted the, the solutions which are offered by these startups. And many records have been established this year. So I will just, uh, in a bullet point form, I will share the key records which have been established this year. So number one is there's a 3x growth in the funding over the previous year, which is the highest ever funding raised in a single year. Uh, number two, 40 plus unicorns added in 2021, which is again a highest in a single year and third highest number of unicorns added in, in 2021 among all other countries. The next is the deep tech ecosystem, which holds a great importance if we talk about the innovation perspective. So deep tech ecosystems continue to penetrate more and more and getting stronger with time. And now we have over 3000 plus startups leveraging deep tech. But one thing which fascinated me the most in this 2021 is the listing of the Indian startup ecosystem on the stock exchange. Earlier, we had only a handful of startups on the stock exchange, but now we have in 2021, 11 startups got listed. This actually means that journey to scale exponentially started for the tech ecosystem. And this listing on the stock exchange is like a new trigger. So earlier, uh, Unicorn and all these things are like a benchmark, but today listing is a new trigger for the startups to explore and expand going forward. And IPOs are basically a new way forward scaling your startup. Not only right. these numbers that outshined in 2021, but a new wave uh, was seen in driving this tech ecosystem, which was seen, which was never seen before. Like number one, uh, startups coming out of emerging hubs are increasing day by day and it's increasing at a rapid pace. And if you look, talk about the numbers, this startups coming out of emerging hubs are growing at a CAGR of 15%. And what it means? that this emerges, this emergence will give a strong push to the plethora of budding entrepreneurs in that from the lower tier cities. So now we cannot say that, yes, the entrepreneurs are coming from the metro cities, but these from the lower tiers, so also new and new entrepreneurs will come up. Another important point which I've seen a new, you can say uh, never like before is the acquisitions by the well-funded startups. So by the well-funded startups, we mean that the unicorns are the potential unicorns. So these well-funded startups have are, do, are on the acquisition spree. It was never seen before. So this year, these well-funded startups did 35 plus acquisitions, which is two weeks, two times more than the last year. Again, a big surprise. It means the last startups are working actively to increase their capability and portfolio through these acquisitions. So they want they are on a business expansion free spree. Another important never like before uh, trend which you are seeing in this, the investor's trust. So investor's trust has always been strong uh, towards the startup, Indian startup ecosystem. But what have increased significantly is the unique institutional investors. So this in 2021, there is a more than 70% increase in the unique institutional investors. 
there is a 2.5x growth in the investors involved in the last size deals. So there is a huge increase in the last size deals. What it means that the investors see a scalable potential in the Indian startup ecosystem and they are actively investing in the mature startups to where they see a large scalable potential. So in short, we can say that 2021 was a remarkable year, not only from a numbers perspective, but it gave Indian startup, Indian startup ecosystem a new face and recognition. So, and a respectable standing among all global countries. So I want to, I want to go to uh, Nirmala on this one. I mean, Nirmala, if you want to add, because you also are tracking the IT BPM and the industry trends. So if you want to add to what Ashish just said, I think that will be really helpful for the viewers to understand better because he's put in a lot of data points over there. Right, thanks Naman. Uh, just like you mentioned, Ashish also gave a detailed uh, number centric information about what has happened in 2021. So we have given the record breaking year of 2021 in terms of fund inflow, the emergence of unicorns from the Indian tech startup ecosystem. 2022 is also expected to continue this momentum. So we see that presently as we are into the fourth month of 2022, the Indian startup ecosystem has already added 15 new entrants into the unicorn club. And uh, the best part is these are in varied areas. For example, you have a deal share in social commerce. You have live, live space and in home interiors and renovation, express bees in logistics, gaming. And of course, now the, which we consider to be normal verticals like edtech, fintech, B2B, e-commerce. So all these are really very interesting areas that are coming up and uh, also according to NASCOM we have actually estimated that you know India has around 135 plus uh, potential unicorns which you know uh, so uh, what we see is your uh, since the year is just beginning there are many more to come and I think it's just going to be a party. <laughs> Let's I mean, let's all hope for that. Uh, I want to stay with the the topic of startups because that's something which is very important considering you know the the old tech year that we're looking forward to, mm -hmm. and also it's been in the news for all the right reasons. So Ashish, I want to come back to you again, and you know we've saw we've seen that a few startups have gone for IPOs, right? Which is a little su surprising from the lens of few experts. I mean, some of the experts have still have their reservations around it. So what's your take in it? I mean, how how should we take it? Should we take it as a positive thing? What are the maybe a couple of, couple of do's and don'ts around it? Uh, you know, Ashish, because you're the startup guy. So, uh, you know, if you can share some light on that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Naman, uh, startups going for IPO is the most exciting thing and fascinating part of me in 2021. So if you talk about uh, the doubts and the, uh, the people and the speculation that people have on the IPO, I think that's temporary. It, with time, I think it will, it will all fade away. Uh, but for me, uh, these IPOs are like a new revolution in the startup ecosystem because earlier turning unicorn was the only benchmark for a startup. And once you turn unicorn, I think there's nothing like a look forward. You just keep on going. But now listing is like a new benchmark. And now a look forward for any startup who wants to scale more and more because these IPOs will give a further growth push, which uh, startups always look for. And not only it helps the startups to grow, but it, it gives a new level of recognition to a startup globally, which further helps them to scale across the world. So scaling globally also, these IPOs will help a startup to scale globally also. Now, one key point to highlight here is that public have also started accepting the Indian startup IPOs. So there's no speculations in their mind and their heart about these IPOs. And uh, if you talk about the numbers that almost all IPOs of 2021, all these startup IPOs of 2021 got oversubscribed multiple times. And it clearly shows the trust the Indian people have in this Indian startup ecosystem, a big point to highlight. Also, if we talk about the base, so uh, the scaled up startups are also increasing rapidly. So if you talk about the base of potential unicorns, and, and the companies which are planning for the IPOs are increasing uh, tremendously. So as Nimla told that India now has 135 plus potential unicorns and many of them are planning for IPO this year. So this year has been a little, little bit choppy in terms of the IPO uh, because of this global condition, but the IPO plans for these potential unicorns are still on the cards and they're just waiting for the market condition to settle down. I think we will see a bumper uh, listing of many 
of these potential unicorns. So I think 15 plans are already planning to list on the stock exchange. Uh, but overall, uh, market might be shaky, might be choppy right now because of some global factors. But overall, I think people should be uh, positive and look forward for the startup IPO because that is what will push Indian startup <laughs> ecosystem to global heights. So I think a sector to look forward to. Right, some interesting uh, points there. Uh, Nirmala, I, I want to, uh, you know, get a quick thought from you as well, because I've seen that uh, you release that uh, monthly newsletter, which is called the the Tech Bytes, if I'm not wrong. Right, and and you often cover such news in that as well. I mean, when we are uh, publishing that. So what's your take on what just, you know, as she said around these, you know, startups going in for IPOs. Uh, yeah. So what's your take on that? So, like Ashish uh, mentioned, uh, startups filing for IPOs was a watershed moment for the Indian tech industry. It has broken all glass ceilings and it's moving in a positive direction. So, uh, it is actually a really uh, great uh, uh, thing for the tech industry. But what we also see is there are certain teething problems uh, in, in terms of the metrics that uh, needs to be identified. These needs to be ironed out, but for even more success, greater success. But uh, yeah, overall, uh, uh, filing IPOs by the tech startup ecosystem is something which is actually, like uh, she said, revolutionizing the whole startup ecosystem. Right. Uh, I think that's that's well uh said and and i want to uh, shift our focus a little bit towards SaaS as well the indian uh, you know software as a as a service landscape is continuously you know maturing and it's maturing at a very rapid pace with more and more companies uh, reaching larger scale and driving heightened investor interest so i want to uh, pull in diksha on, on this particular point so diksha if you can probably highlight uh, what are the factors that are contributing this to this strong growth and, and, and what the future holds, you know, particularly uh, and what we can expect from the Indian SaaS company in the future? So I think, Naman, I want okay, first thank you uh, for this opportunity. Uh, what I'll do is I'll break the uh, sort of the demand drivers into two broad categories, right? One category is which is being driven by the continued digital transformation journey. It was a journey that started much before the pandemic, but the pandemic has accelerated that journey quite a lot. And both large, medium and small companies are now on their digital transformation journey. Uh, one of the main points or parts of this journey is to convert your on uh, on-prem legacy systems into cloud-based. So one uh, channel of demand is going to come from there, especially for SaaS solutions. Another uh, channel is where uh, emerging or so-called traditional uh, sectors are also now moving on to cloud, right? So for example, education, we always had edtech which was cloud first in many ways, but the traditional education system because of the pandemic was forced to adopt cloud and cloud-based solutions, right? Because of virtual class classroom sure. model. Similarly, retail. Retail, now we are seeing more and more of the online plus offline model uh, and direct to consumer models, right? And that is all going to be based on cloud. And manufacturing, given that they're pushing for adopting industry 4.0, increasing use of AR, VR, etc., the background or the foundational technology for that is going to be cloud. And even government is emerging as one of the leading uh, uh, consumers of SaaS products. So that is uh, the second point. And because of the distributed work model and uh, driven, uh, driven by the pandemic and the distributed business model as well, right? We are going to see a lot of uptake in uh, collaboration applications, uh, security systems, application platforms, content workflow applications, and all of those. So that is one category uh, of uh, drivers. Uh, the second category is basically shifting from, I think the SaaS uh, ecosystem is now shifting gradually from a horizontal focus to a more, more vertical industry focused model, right? So a lot of right. industry specific niche solutions are being built and that is going to be of interest to even the large players. Uh, uh, and uh, 
supporting this SaaS ecosystem and which I feel is a key differentiator for India is the very healthy support ecosystem. I think Ashish also mentioned the interest of investors, right? And right. particularly SaaS has around 400 investors, 400 plus investors and 500 plus incubators and accelerators. Uh, also, like I mentioned, large technology players are going to look for partnerships with startups, especially those startups that offer uh, niche solutions that will, you know, uh, provide a, a competitive edge in the market. So a lot of demand is going to come from that segment. And I think the final uh, demand driver is, of course, technology. So technology will drive technology in a sense. Uh, given the uh, laser sharp focus on uh, enhancing customer experience and personalization, right? We'll see a lot of uptake of AI based solutions, API led SaaS products, mobile first solutions. So those are some of the uh, growth drivers that I see for the SaaS uh, segment. Uh, so Ashish, I want to, uh, you know, get some quick thoughts from you as well on, on what Deeksha just said about the Indian uh, you know, SaaS ecosystem, because I remember that you had also done uh, a series of blogs around this, you know, SaaS strategy playbook series, which was uh, last year. Uh, and I think uh, if you can really add to what Diksha just said, I think that will be really helpful for the viewers and, and for the audience to understand. I agree with Diksha on most of the points. I think she has covered uh, most of the important points, which uh, the factors which led to the strong growth of SaaS. Uh, what I've seen that the investor base in SaaS is also getting diverse and investors from new categories are also emerging. Like we, we are seeing that corporate, venture capital and uh, sovereign wealth funds. These kind of new categories are also emerging and we can see all these things in various reports. So as the Indian landscape uh, matures, founders have also begun greater involvement from investors. So investors are seeking to add value beyond simply providing capital and connections by providing operational support on go to market. Product growth, expansion, recruitment. So uh, there is an increasing role of venture capital and they, they are not just giving you the money, they are just mentoring a company for a proper growth. So mentorship has increased a loss in the SaaS ecosystem. Also, I like to highlight that the Indian SaaS founders have uh, worked a lot and developed and they know how to crack the market. So they know the growth strategy of this market and they read the market quite well and they target accordingly. So I would give a credit to the Indian SaaS founders also. So they develop a good strategy. They target a specific market and offer a differentiated product. So uh, when they work on the strategy, they look for a right product market fit, better pricing and strong go to market strategy. And last, but not the least, least their continuous focus on innovation. So Indian entrepreneurs, they focus a lot on innovative SaaS products so that the market have the good potential to grow and it is getting it, the product is getting well accepted in the market. So I think these are some of the reasons over and above the, what Diksha mentioned about the continuous growth of the SaaS market. Right. So I think uh, that really this really sums it up nicely the entire discussion that we've had, and I'm probably I'm you know moving into my my favorite part of the discussion where I take your final cues on what the Indian uh, you know how the Indian uh, tech startup ecosystem is going to shape up in the new financial year because we've just entered the new FY, and uh, you know any of your favorite areas. So I'll start with you, Ashish, because you're the startup guy. So I'll start with you, and then. Uh, you know, with Deksha and Nirmala can also add to it. So what's your take on the, the Indian tech startup ecosystem in the, in the new uh, financial year and any favorite areas? And the, the, I think that that will be a really nice thing to know what the experts think, you know, what are their favorite areas? So if you ask me, Raman, I will just do the counting this year. So <laughs> I'll do the counting of unicorns and the number of IPOs which come up. So the because the way these unicorns and IPOs are coming, I think this year I it will not be surprising that we shattered even 2021 record. So the unicorns and IPOs, I will keep on counting and let's see what we have for 2022. So you you're not you're not mentioning anything. You're just saying let's wait and watch. Yeah, exactly. It's a wait <laughs> and watch. Anything can happen because the way these unicorns have come up, even predictions are <laughs> continue to be wrong. I don't want to give any specific number, but yes, we are optimistic. So it would be who knows 2x, 3x. We don't know. Let's see. 
Okay, and and Nirmala, what's uh, and and you want to add something and then surprise the audience again? <laughs> so maybe you want to give some numbers. <laughs> No, no, we are very conservative. I just say that I'm very gung ho about the disruptive solutions that are being created by the Indian startups, not only catering to the diverse India market, but also the global market. And what is even more heartening is that uh, these are solutions which will uh, surely create a larger impact again, not only for our Indian economy, but the common man. So looking forward to such solutions and, you know, learning more about them. That is where I'm very interested in. Of course, unicorns, IPOs, numbers. Ashish is very keen on that. It will always <laughs> add value, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Diksha, probably you would mention some of your, some of your favorite areas. Because I didn't get it from, uh, Ashish, I didn't get it from Nirvala till. <laughs> no, I'll take that risk. I will take that risk. See, I see a lot of emerging opportunities, uh, Naman. Uh, and if you're a startup, this is the right time to be one. Uh, just to, you know, give some examples, event tech is going to be a big thing uh, based on our experience in the pandemic. I'm Absolutely. very excited to see what uh, happens in the sports tech space. That is one underpenetrated area, but huge opportunity. Uh, space tech is another interesting area. And we are also seeing a lot of interesting, I mean, uh, Opportunities come from metaverse. That's one big. Everybody is talking about it and Web3. Crypto continued, continues to be in the news. Uh, other solutions, I think, will be from, a, like I said, vertical based solutions. Uh, I think supply chain solutions will be of interest. And also some solutions that are focused primarily on the SMB segment in India, right? Their requirements are quite different from large enterprises so having some smb specific solutions also would be uh, you know would drive growth but my personal interest would be to see how sports tech and space tech and match that would be very mm. interesting well, that that's definitely going to be very interesting because my personal favorite is also sports so and i think a lot of people in, in considering that india is a sports loving country so i think that's one area and, and you really you know pointed out rightly that it's something which is still uh, not penetrated as it should have been uh, yeah. in the past. I think event tech still we've made some uh, progress in that particular area with hybrid events and I think, but I think sports tech is something which is still uh, yet to be explored. So uh, thank you so much, uh, you know, Ashish, Diksha, Nimala for joining me today. And uh, I think this was one of the most insightful discussions that we have and we really, you know, the last question that we have saved, uh, we, so we saved the best for the last. So uh, that's how I'll put it. And thank you so much for joining and for to our or to our viewers and to our subscribers, I would say please stay tuned for session four and uh, you know, share, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel NASCOM Insights and stay tuned for more roundtable discussions around the SR 2022. Thank you so much. Thank you, Naman. Thank you. Naman. Thank you. Thank you. We had a great time. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Bye.